we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we have four public hearings that we need to address first. So uh, item number one, public hearing amendment to section 405.050. Jack, do you want to address that? Yes, sir. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Board. First item we have is a text amendment to section 405.050, definitions and interpretation. It is to add a definition for an RV layover stop. This motion for approval passed six to zero with two abstentions due to working relationships, one absent and one vacancy at the May 1st, 2014 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. And I'd like to ask to make part of the public hearing record, my planning and zoning report, the public hearing notices, and the municipal code by reference. Okay. Any questions for Jack? Uh, what's a text amendment as opposed to some other amendment? Text is basically, it's kind of the term in planning and zoning that is amending the text. It's coming in front of the board and saying, we don't fit into your code, so we want to change the text of the code so that we can be considered fitting in with it in the code. Okay. Does that answer your question? Well, I'll think about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Okay. Is, is there anyone in the audience that wants to address uh, uh, this issue in the public hearing, either for or against? Not hearing from anyone, I'll close that public hearing and we'll open public hearing number two, amendment to Apex A, ADM 67. This is a proposed amendment to Appendix A, and it is to add the RV layover stop to the Appendix A to zoning grid. This motion for approval passed 6 to 0 with two abstentions due to working relationships, one absence, and one vacancy at the May 1st, 2014 Planning and Zoning <coughs> Commission meeting. And I'd also like to ask to make part of the public hearing record. Uh, my planning zoning report, public hearing notices, and the municipal code by reference. Any questions for Jack? Thank you, Jack. Does anyone uh, from the audience like to address that issue, uh, either for or against? If not, I'll close that public hearing and we'll open up public hearing number three, Step Up TLP LLC Site Plan 84. This is a site plan approval request for a transitional living facility to be located at 101, 103, 105 Morgan Trails Court. Um, April 3rd, 2014, a request was filed for a site plan approval for the transitional living facility. Uh, the property is zoned R3 high density residential. This motion for approval passed seven to zero with one abstention due to working relationship, one absent and one vacancy at the May 1st, 2014 Planning and Zoning Commission's meeting. And I'd also like to ask to make part of the public hearing record, my planning and zoning report, public hearing notices, and the municipal code by reference. Any questions from the board? Anyone from the audience want to address uh, for or against? Mm -hmm. You may come up and give us your name for the record. Hi, I'm Kathy Pritchett. I'm the owner of Step Up Transitional Living Program and just really want to let you know that I'm here if you have any questions. Um, I'm obviously for approving okay. it. We're, and we'll, we'll discuss it in a little more detail later in the agenda. Okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. Anyone else uh, care to speak? Then I'm going to close that public hearing and open uh, public hearing four. It also involves Step Up TLP LLC Conditional Use Permit-38. Yes, this is a conditional use permit approval request for a transitional living facility to be located at 101, 103, 105 Morgan Trails Court. On April 3rd, 2014, a request was filed for a conditional use permit approval for a transition living facility. And once again, this property is zoned R3, high density residential. The uh, motion for approval passed seven to zero with one abstention due to working relationship one absence, one vacancy at the May 1st, 2014 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting with the conditions that no more than four guests or residents 
reside in any single unit and that one unit is occupied as residence by the management staff of the facility. I'd also like to ask that part of the public hearing record is my planning zoning report, the public hearing notices, and the municipal code by reference. Questions for Jack? Thank you, Jack. You're welcome, sir. Any, anyone in the audience like to uh, speak uh, for or against? I'm going to close the public hearing. And at this time, we'll open the uh, Board of Aldermen meeting for the City of Warrington for May 20th, 2014. I'm going to ask Alderman Sluter to uh, lead us in place of the of I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item on the uh, agenda number, and actually before I get started, uh, and I want to ver verify that, I do want to change the agenda, and um, I want to take the uh, executive session off on item 15. Uh, Councilor Gravel, are you fine with that? Yes. Okay, so, uh, so I want to remove item 15, there'll be no, no executive session tonight. Item three on the agenda is approval of minutes for the regular board meeting minutes from May 6th, 2014. Make a motion that we approve the regular board minutes from May 6th, 2014. I'll second. Motion by Alderman Cashley, seconded by Alderman Sluter to approve the regular board meeting minutes from May 6th, 2014. Roll call, please. Alderman Dreyer is sick. Alderman Schluter? Yes. Alderman Holly? Yes. Alderperson Cassidy? Yes. Alderman Off? Yes. Alderman Clark? Yes. Motion carried 5 0. At this time on the agenda, we, we ask uh, uh, if there's anyone from the public that would like to address the board, we uh, allow you to come forward and speak. Uh, we ask you to limit your remarks to five minutes or less. So if anybody would like to come forward and speak to the board, please do so at this time. Not hearing from anyone, we'll extend that same courtesy to the Board of Aldermen. Uh, any of the Aldermen would like to speak to the public, we'll do so at this time, and we'll start with Alderman Schluter. Just to add two things, I'd like to, I noticed the uh, outcome we had out here at the pavilion, I was pretty happy to see that. That's, that's a great thing. Um, secondly, Chief, uh, I think I've already expressed it, but I am looking forward to next Wednesday. It'll uh, be a good turnout, I think it ought to be good. So. That's it. Okay. You expand on um, the outcome. What happened at the pavilion? Farmer's Market. Well, Farmer's Market. It was and just a good turnout. What's next told. Wednesday? Torch the run. torch run. Sorry. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> I should have specified that. Okay. All right. Not a problem. I don't have anything. Nothing? Um, I do. I would like to uh, thank Brad's staff. Um, right now we've got a lot of grass growing. I was out at the cemetery today and um, this is a busy weekend with Memorial Weekend, and um, the cemetery looks like it's all ready to go with the exception of one little patch that I'm sure they're trying to get done. So that is a lot of work to trim and to mow, so I appreciate that. It looks really nice. I had a couple of guys, uh, crew, since I'm short staff, to help me out for a couple of hours this morning. So it's yeah. been a joint uh, F effort trying to yeah. get it done. It looks nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, not? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing? Okay. I got a couple of brief things I want to report on. Um, we, we were able to uh, attend the school board meeting here about, I don't know, about 10 days ago, 12 days ago. I, I thank uh, Alderman Casterly and Alderman Clark uh, for being able to go along and attend the meeting with me. I really want to thank uh, Guy Gavers for uh, taking time off, off when he was on vacation that day and came in and attended a meeting with us. Uh, the subject that we attended was uh, asking the school board to uh, team up with the city uh, to, to do a sidewalk project on Pickney Street, 1,700 foot of sidewalk. We were hoping to do a 50-50 type deal. Uh, the school's in the midst of their budget hearing just like we are, and they kind of wanted to wait and see how they, they fare when they get their budget together for next year. Hopefully, they, they will be able to partner up with us, and that's something we can get on the agenda and 
finish here late fall maybe. So I thank everybody for, for going along and, and being uh, supportive of that issue. The other thing uh, Alderman Sluter just mentioned, I was going to mention to the public that farmers markets open today, so beat me to that. Um, Walton sidewalk looks great. It's coming along good. The guys are working on that daily, and I come by there every day and check on them and uh, uh, making good progress. So I, I appreciate that. The other thing I want to report on, uh, I, I was able to attend the uh, 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 benefit auction for the economic development, the Greater Warren County Economic Development. They teamed up with the Montgomery County Economic Development, and they do this every year. One year, Warrington hosted the next year Montgomery hosted. Um, we, it, it was quite impressive. Uh, uh, Chief uh, Cottishell attended and his lovely wife Lori. Uh, my wife and I were able to attend. Every community uh, that's a member of the Economic Development Council had representation there. I was really impressed with that. Uh, the, the building they hold, that they held it in held 350 people they sold 350 tickets. Uh, every table was, so, was sold out, and I thought that was pretty cool. The end results uh, was they raised about a, a profit of about $100,000, which is kind of unheard of in this tough economic times. 50 of that will go to the Montgomery Economic Development, 50 will go to the Warren County Economic Development. <clears throat> a, a, a pretty cool thing. Hopefully next year we can get more of our Aldermen involved and, and make sure everybody's aware of when and what's going on. I, I didn't realize it sold out that quick. That uh, it seemed like once the tickets were available, people grabbed them. The highest item sold was a uh, American flag uh, that was flown in Afghanistan on an Apache helicopter. It was all folded up military style and in a nice viewing case and so forth. Brought fifty one hundred dollars and uh, uh, pretty pretty neat deal. So outside of that. That's the end of, of my note. So, with that out, uh, anything else going on? We're going to move on down the agenda. And the first thing on the agenda, or number seven on the agenda, is Director of Operations, Terry Thorne. My first item for you this evening is just the annual question regarding the back to school uh, sales tax holiday. Uh, we have participated in this since the first year of its inception. And if the board chooses to again participate, we need to take no action. But if we choose to opt out uh, of participation, then there would need to be a vote of the board not to participate. Do, do we know what the actual dollar amount is, it might, how it affects the city? There is no way to know There's exactly. No uh, we looked at the numbers, and it appears that just comparing um, from the month of the sales tax holiday to the month before and the month after, somewhere perhaps between three and five thousand dollars is the impact. But it really is impossible to know exactly from that one weekend how much of the sales tax is attributable to that. This week, this year, um, the dates are August first through third. I think this is a pretty important thing for our community and even though we're not getting the sales tax on it, a lot of people from surrounding areas do come to our community and, and eat at our restaurants and everything else that we have around here so uh, it would be my opinion that we should continue doing this. Comments? I agree with you, Ken. I definitely agree. Any problems? Do you need a motion or something? No, no we don't. No, we just no. need a general consensus. <laughs> not general consensus. We're fine. Uh, we're, it looks like the board's content with continuing on with the sales tax holiday. Great. Uh, my next item for you is the health insurance renewal. Um, our new broker, JW Terrell and Company, um, had taken our health insurance out and looked at several options. Um, what they have come back with as recommendations are the Coventry plans. Um, on your uh, spreadsheet that's contained in your file, you have the spreadsheet that shows the current plan compared to the renewal of what the current plan is with exactly the same benefits. Um, that results in an increase of 5% um, over what our current premiums are. Um, totals about $25,000 um, for a year. 
and of that about 20,000 is the part um, that would be additional expense to the city. Um, they also have given us a couple of other uh, options to compare. There is an option one, um, which when you look at the dollars of it, uh, is about a 1.6% decrease. There are some fairly significant um, differences in the coverages, which if you look at the third um, page, of your information there shows that there's increases um, in the deductible in the co-pays for primary care and specialists um, also changes to urgent care and emergency room uh, with increases as well as changes in what the pharmacy component of that is um, I tried to do some average what perhaps an average family or an average employee and spouse uh, would experience with those changes, particularly from the pharmacy perspective, which seemed to be the biggest and probably the most used component. Um, looks like for a family who had um, two generic drugs a month and one visit to a primary care physician, I'm assuming that's probably fairly symbolic of what of, you know maybe an employee and spouse would experience um, with option one it's an increase of about hundred and eighty dollars in those prescription costs and co-pays um, with option two about a two hundred and forty dollar increase and what I tried to do then is compare that with the savings to the employee in the reduced premium and for option one, again, comparing maybe an employee and spouse, it's about $16 in savings annually um, and about $300 in savings for option two. Um, I think all of these are good plans. Um, we've had good experience with Coventry in the past. Uh, so I don't know if with a 5% increase in premium, which is in this day and age in the health insurance market seems to be a pretty positive number uh, if we really want to look at reduction in um, benefits or if we want to save that for a future when perhaps it's not as attractive at renewal you have a recommendation for the board personal recommendation um, my recommendation would be to renew with the current policy uh, with the 5% increase and again save those reductions in benefits when we come up on a year which I'm sure will happen where we don't have an attractive renewal of the current plan and then use those to be able to reduce the increase in our annual premiums the, uh, the board have any opinions or direction on this yeah, I'd agree with this. <laughs> Well, I talked to Terry about this uh, earlier, um, and one of the things we talked about, my gut initially was to go with the 5% because it's pretty minimal when you consider, 20,000 is still 20, but when you consider what the market could be, my thinking wasn't so much for future increases, but I think what one of the plans was that we would bring in the brokerage firm for a three year period, and next year they would have some time throughout the fall to sit down and develop a more comprehensive plan for healthcare. And there may be where you ask the employees to participate more as incentives for improved health. So instead of doing this increase to employee now, in the fall, I would assume that's the time frame, mm -hmm. really start looking at it with them in terms of how we can really restructure the whole plan. Yes. I agree with that. I would make a motion to renew the health insurance with Coventry with the current plan with the 5% increase. I'll second that. Motion made by Alderman Castro, seconded by Alderman Schluter to renew our health insurance uh, renewal with uh, Coventry. Do we need to state the amount in there, uh, Melanie? Is that necessary? Yeah, you probably need to. Probably should. So the amount of five hundred and forty-three thousand four hundred twenty-four dollars. Double check my numbers. Wouldn't renewal be five sixty-eight? 
Would it be oh, easier just to right. say cover these options yes, number one? Yes, or, yes or because plan. if your number of employees changes, change. it's going to change your dollar amount. So we Actually. won't won't include that. Mm -hmm. okay. That's right. I gave you the wrong numbers anyway. <laughs> any any other discussion from the from the board? I ask, I need a roll call on that. Alderman Holly? Yes. Alderman Person Castle? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Clark? Yes. Alderman Schluter? Yes. Motion carried uh, 5 0 with one absent. Vending machine? Well, now that we do not have concessions uh, operated by the city more our athletic complex, and the pool is preparing to open this weekend, we need to put some type of vending machines at the pool. Uh, so that those patrons have access to drinks and snacks and that sort of thing. We have two options. Uh, we can either purchase snack machines that are designed for outside, and we purchase the product, both the drinks and the snacks. Um, our staff loads those into the machine, and we collect the revenue and the profit from the sales from that um, concession. The other option is to have uh, best Vending, uh, who's been the person locally who will offer us both a snack machine and a drink machine, uh, come out, place the machines as we've had in the past, and they completely take care of those machines. They service the machines, they load the product, um, they collect the revenues. And then in the past, I think we had an agreement with them where we got some small amount of money um, as a percentage from their sales. It never really amounted to much. Um, but those are the two options that we have. I think we need to make a decision so that we can get moving toward getting something over there for those patrons at the pool. Do you think the vending company that services the machines and fills it, do you think they would be as, a, as a, a attending to keeping them full as we would? I would doubt that they would be as attentive. Um, it would be less labor intensive for us to just allow them to take care of it. Um, so it's really just dependent on if you're interested in expending the labor to do it and collecting the revenue, which we don't know what that number would really end up being because I don't think we have any idea what the use is. Um, the convenience side of it would be to just let the vending company handle it and then if there's waste of product or product becomes outdated, then it's their cost to bear. So it really just depends on what you know you really want to see happen there. The, the <coughs> machines for outdoor use are fairly expensive. Uh, we've done quite a bit of research, and somewhere around the five thousand dollar mark would be the initial capital outlay just to purchase the machine. So it's not an inexpensive proposition to get into the vending business. Have we used the outside firm before? Yes. And did we get um, complaints about product not being there? There were some complaints about machines not working. You know, it would steal their quarters or their dollars or whatever on occasion. Um, but every company that we've ever had experiences some of that. And the truth is we would probably experience some of that on our own. Yeah. My inclination is to say let's let the outside vending company do the whole thing. I, I think we have bigger fish to fry than sending somebody up there to be filling machines and doing that. Well, and then repairing the machines when well, they get vandalized right. or anything else. Like that, yeah, so. storm damage. That yeah. would be my gut. Mm -hmm. I agree. Gentlemen, I agree. Sorry. It's a pretty short time, right, yeah, that we have sure. you know, to recoup $6,000. It would take a long time. You're not going to do Just because things in the past are agree. The vandalism can we would be responsible. I think that would be the only time to do it. So so we it, it sounds like we, we're going to let a, a board is willing to let an outside vending company do it. Do you need a motion? I don't think we do uh, at this point. We just need to know what direction to go to get that to go. <laughs> does, does, uh, do we allow people to bring food into the pool area? Um, I believe that they do, as okay. long as it's not in glass bottles and okay. you know within those restrictions. So if machines weren't full or there was issues, people still could bring their own soda in if necessary. Right. Okay. Right. Um, and the only other thing that I have for you this evening is just to say that the pool is opening this weekend. Uh, Brad and his crew, uh, with some assist assistance from Guy's staff, have been working very fervently over there to 
um, deal with all of the typical pre-pool opening type issues that we seem to experience every year. But Brad tells me that the pool looks great and we're ready. And so. And he just, heated the water too, right? <laughs> yeah, the only minute to go swimming tonight after the meeting. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> and test it out. Test it out. Um, so we're ready mm -hmm. and we hope for warm weather this weekend and successful opening. And the other thing was that the farmer's market did open today and there were a number of vendors. Right. In fact, I looked out the window and said, that's the most vendors that I've ever seen over there. And several of us went over and spoke with them and they were very happy with the number of patrons that they had for it to be their opening day. So I, I think it will grow and as it catches on and continue so. to grow. Hope so anyway. That's all I have for you this evening. Anything, uh, the board have anything for Terry? I think one of the concerns about the farmer's market in the past has been promoting and advertising. Are we doing anything? Um, they have run some ads already. Okay. There is, uh, I saw the mock-up today of the billboard that's getting ready to go up, which advertises the farmer's market on one side and the citywide yard sale on the other. So um, the question there is how to get the location on to that small space so that they know it's the market in Warrington versus Wright City. So Michelle was working on that today uh, with the art crew from um, the billboard company. So within the next few weeks, we should have actually the billboard out there. Um, I believe that there's also some ads that are scheduled for the newspaper to advertise the market opening here. Thank you, Terry. You're welcome. All right, I'm ready for item eight, Mr. Gevers. Public Works Director. Good evening, Mayor and Board. Uh, you have my monthly report. And if you have any questions, we don't we don't know what all these numbers mean. That's our first question. I I did have a question. Um, it looked like if you looked at the well production history, we're producing in the first four months about seven percent more in water than we did for the prior four months last year. And if you look at the history of it, it looks like we have one year where it spiked, but generally the water usage goes down. But this year we're up quite a bit for four months. Do you have any explanation of that? Um, I'll have to look into it. I do not to come up with the answer that quick. I'd have to okay. see what our sales and that were at, our, and then flushing the hydrants and stuff like that. I'm sure this month's going to be up a little bit too because we filled the pool. Do, so. do, would we, Terry, expect to see? Uh, revenue and water up to if, if Th we that's what I need to look into to see where our revenues at from coke to see if coke's using more water and then um, other issues with that would, so would, would depend on how many water main breaks we've had too. that's and would be the fire department and that we've been flushing hydrants but that's that's a lot of water and for me to tell you what the answer you would, is. You would hope to see 7% increase in revenue, right? but I don't think we're going to see that. My guess is you're going to find that a good majority of it is hybrid flushing and those things that don't generate revenue. Right. Um, because we've not added any new customers, we've not added anything that would utilize from a billing perspective, unless it is Coca-Cola. Right. Um, there's nobody who would use that volume of water, so my guess is it's other purposes. Because if Coke use that volume of water, we know about it. Yeah, absolutely. Don't they generally pull from their own wells? Uh, they do, uh, but a lot of that water that we'll be picking up from the wastewater too, so we monitor that. Okay. But to give you a direct answer, I can't do that without okay, looking. I'm curious. Any questions for uh, Mr. Gevers on his uh, report? How about item B? The next item I have is, is uh, the ORP probe at the wastewater plant. I need to purchase a couple sensors for that. And the total is $18,950. What is an ORP probe for it, us? Uh, it's an oxidational uh, reduction potential. It measures the DO, dissolved oxygen in the water, and You'll have a high DO, and then it needs to go to a low DO to uh, take care of some ammonia and some bacteria. And during the winter months, you'll have a higher DO because the water temperature is colder. And then during the summer months, you have a lower. So what this probe does is 
it's built into a rotor that puts oxygen in the water so when the DO increases the rotors will slow down and create less DO the uh, rotors on our, on our variable frequency drive so if we turn the radio rotors on continuously and just keep a high DO our ammonia will go up in our, in our limits and with our new permit we have a ammonia limits on it this is an item that's been on the plant for a while the uh, winter is was hard on them they actually hang in the water so this do you replace them like once a year or how often do you replace those this is the first time that we've had to replace them oh, okay and is it like a, literally a probe with it's some a probe kind of analysis it, 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 it measures in milliamps uh, so you'll have a DO, regular DO probe that'll give you a, a big range, and then this other probe will get it down smaller. Uh, the more colder the weather, the more oxygen you got in the water, it creates electrical current, and that's what it picks up off of. So the, the obvious question is, why did you go with the option two, not that we're comparing less? Option one was less. Uh, option two was with two two of them sitting on the shelf and with the upgrade of the wastewater treatment plant to see what we're going to do with that they might change that system the way it is if I need another probe then I'll just order the probe as needed I didn't want to spend that much money to have two sitting on the shelf and never use them and they decide to change something okay. we have to get this in, in check because of our new permit and our ammonia is uh, we have higher limits on ammonia during the winter and then during the summer the limits drop down because of the weather. So is this purchased from a specific company? Or? It's coming from a, um, a certain company but I have to go through Ruster and Associates because they're a sales rep for it so I can't just go straight to the source it has to go through Rustler's and there's more components to this unit. It's a sole vendor because there's more components to this unit because this is just a probe and then the probe is relaying information to the controller telling the rotors to, to turn. If I wanted to re-hamp the whole thing, then I'd have to have new controllers, new probes, new design. Is this not something that could have been uh, bid out? Um, or it no, it's a sole vendor. I mean, okay. I would have to bid the whole thing out. Okay. The controls and everything. Gotcha. I understand. So I make a motion for the purchase of a instrumental replacement option number two at eighteen thousand nine hundred fifty dollars. Second. Motion by Alderman Ox, seconded by Alderman Cashley to approve Yay. the purchase. Holly. Oh, Holly. To approve the purchase of the DO and ORP Pro in analyzer replacement in the amount of eighteen thousand nine hundred fifty. Any questions? Roll call, please. Alder Preston Casterly? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Clark? Yes. Alderman Schlater? Yes. Alderman Holly? Yes. Motion carried five zero with one absent. What else? That's Mr. It. That's it? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a cheap well, night. <coughs> only one item. <laughs> well. He was on vacation. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I heard that too. Police Department, Chief Hottishaw, good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Board. The first thing I have this evening is the monthly report from April 2014. Um, I expect to see ride alongs coming up with warmer weather and um, people with extra time to come out and ride along. But Does the uh, new board understand that's part of the requirement mm -hmm. that they all have to do ride alongs? Sure. <laughs> I don't know about Eric. Or yeah, Eric all needs, he needs experience, right? He might, right. He might have some OGAT time already on there. <laughs> Any questions about the monthly report? Yeah, if you look at the uh, comparatives of number of calls between the first four months of this year versus the first four months of last year, last year's calls were 9,656. This year, for the same period, is 8,336, that's a drop of about 14%. Can you tell us what's going on? No staff. Yeah, well, yeah. We, well, those are calls, right? I mean, well, the, everything is a call. So okay. anything that the police department does is considered a call. So that's not necessarily uh, a telephone call made to dispatch or a 911 call. Okay. Um, the majority of the difference is uh, 
two officers less, uh, an officer that's been out uh, on on duty injury since February 14th, um, and 85 percent, close to 86 percent of the call difference is in officer initiated calls. So traffic stops, uh, directed patrols, extra patrols, it's it's all about you know now the guys are spread a little thinner and the calls that normally would be spread out amongst several other officers are now being taken by less people. So that's really... I mean, it's helpful to know that, that the vast majority of stuff we initiate, as right. opposed to calls coming in we can't respond to. Oh, oh no, that would never, that would never yeah. be the case. Okay, that's... Yep. Anything else? Anything else for the chief? Well, I guess this is a chief slash prosecutor. There's quite a few marijuana activities going on. Does the city do anything with these or is this turned over to the state or how's these things handled? We typically handle the possession of marijuana cases. Um, one of the, you know, it depends on, it depends on what, you know, what they're doing, you know, like with regards to how we handle and what we, how we handle in municipal court and it's really a case by case basis. One of the things we're aware of is, you know, it does disqualify you with a conviction for possession of marijuana for federal financial aid. So we try to work with them or their attorneys um, to the kids that are on track to go to school, which there's a lot of them that get possession of marijuana cases, or if they're participating in athletics, we try to work with them to keep that from necessarily going on their record if they show some pattern. We, most kids that get a possession of marijuana will have to take an alcohol and drug evaluation program class, Alderman Ock, that's an eight-hour class. Um, they typically also have to, I usually have them attend the victim impact panel, which is a class in which uh, you go and you learn how the effects of drunk driving or impaired driving affects people. And they typically have fam people that are there that have family members that are killed and whatnot. And we also have them participate in the Warrington Community Service Program where they come and basically do six hours of labor for Brad or some of the other departments. Um, and if they do that, we'll either consider a suspended imposition of sentence, which may keep them from being convicted, or sometimes even an amendment or a deferral of the charges. It's pretty prevalent. I, I don't want to get too philosophical, but the influx of marijuana with the legalization in a state that's 12 hours away from the state of Missouri I think is absolutely something that we're going to deal with. It's illegal in this state, it's illegal in the city. We prosecute it, but I think we're seeing an influx of marijuana that is not grown in Mexico. We're seeing it growing domestically. We're seeing it purchased domestically. We're seeing people drive, and I don't want to speak for the chief on that, but it's, <coughs> it's prevalent. It's out there. And the reason I brought it up, if the report has, I think, if I counter right, 14 different separate marijuana cases just in the last reporting period of April, which is uh, qu more than twice of what we've seen before. So I was kind of curious as to how we were treating that and you know, what the impact of that is. We, we try to take, I think how I would phrase it is, we try to take into account where they are in their life. We try to take into account um, a treatment option and if they've ever been in trouble before because it's definitely something that will disqualify a lot of future options they have. Well, here's my real ignorant question. We had <laughs> some graffiti on the walk bridge the other time, and I said to an officer, well, what is this? And he said, well, that's a sign for marijuana. I said, that's it. So here the report says somebody was caught with marijuana and a one-hitter. What is a one-hitter? It's a pipe that's one hit of marijuana. Okay. So it's not like you got up four times at bat and you just hit the ball once. It's not that. Okay. So I need to <laughs> you can look at it that way. What? I guess you could look at it that way. Well, maybe. <laughs> I've never heard that expression. Any other questions for the chief? Our Councilor Gravel. My second item is uh, approval for me to sign the memorandum of understanding with the East Central Drug Task Force. Um, our experience with them thus far, um, we've been with them for about a year now, has really been very good. Um, I don't have any exact numbers uh, what they've done here in Warren County or Warrington specifically. Um, however, I'm told, um, and all of their investigations are confidential, but they have um, nearly two dozen cases open 
within the city. So they're actively working uh, many cases here in the city. And as I said, they're responsive to uh, everything that we send their way. And there's an open line of communication. So thus far, it's been a, a very pleasant experience with them. See an authorization to sign? Yes. Are we, are we set on as cooperative members or as match share? We are match share members. Excellent. So yeah, we have a full membership. I'm glad to see that. We need a motion on that, unless there's more discussion. Who signs? Is I do. The no. chief. Make a motion to approve the chief signing the memo of understanding. I'll second that. Motion made by Alderman Ox, seconded by Alderman Sluter to authorize Chief Hadishal to sign a memorandum of understanding with East Central Drug Task Force. Roll call, please. Alderman Ox? Yes. Alderman Clark? Yes. Alderman Sluter? Yes. Alderman Holly? Yes. Alderperson Kessler? Yes. Motion carried 5 0 with one absent. Anything else for the Chief? Just another quick reminder about the torch run. Torch run. Today, the 28th of May. We will be starting at 945 in Forestell from the fast lane and uh, working our way this way over about 14 and a half miles and expect to be here at City Hall between 1215 and 1230 for reception. Okay. Good. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Item 10, uh, Rounds and Maintenance Director Brad Buzicruz. Good evening. Uh, you have my report from April and May or in, to the 5th of May. Uh, mowing, you probably see mowing and uh, trimming is going up, uh, ball fields being set up, dragging them. Um, summer's here and grass is growing, I guess, so. Uh, no snow removal. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> have you found an operator to operate the uh, side arm? Side no, arm? I have not. No? Nope. That, that's a tough job to find yeah. somebody that can operate that. Yeah, there's just nobody. A lot of liability with that. Uh, no a lot of windows being broke. I a know. lot of, yeah. I, I know, we just talked about that today. So A lot oh. of siding and what have you on homes. And Any questions for, for Brad on his uh, Yeah, report? Brad, I had an interesting conversation Sunday with, <coughs> with the, several people who use the uh, tennis courts over at Dyer Park. And they had said to me that the city council approved eight or nine thousand dollars to fix the basketball courts. Is that correct? No, just, uh, that was just last month. We all approved that for, to tear those out and put the new ones in. So the question they had is why? I mean, they looked at basketball courts and the tennis courts, and I said, well, they're both cracked. And their response was, well, but it's not to the point where the city should spend nine thousand dollars to replace it. It wasn't nine thousand; it was uh, I think three thousand for the. Was it three? Yeah, it was three or four thousand. It wasn't. That, it wasn't. I don't think it was nine. Three for I, the material, or was it three for material? Uh, I don't have it on my thing from the last one. Do you remember, Terry? I don't remember. I don't. I don't either. I don't. It, well, I don't. I don't think it wasn't. Well, I mean, we were adding new goals, and if they look at the goals, they're all bent. And right coming down the cracks it's been overlaid twice and concrete underneath underneath of it so the cracks aren't going to stop they're just going to get bigger and bigger and next year we're probably going to look at replacing the tennis courts so okay i mean that, that was their question yeah. i think i think they were just legitimately concerned because they mentioned to me that the city crew had been out and filled an area by the tennis court with gravel behind and the fence and they said it was a real good job but it wasn't quite done so they went out and bought five gallons with the gravel and hauled it up themselves and finished it. <laughs> so, so there are citizens who are really conscientious about it. And they were complimentary the, about the work that was done, but they just, there's always people out there who feel like. Yeah, it, it was done. Money. Guys crew did that for me. I was, we was in the middle of the pool and <laughs> they took a backhoe full of gravel over there and filled a four inch wide little strip of gravel up against the fence that they thought somebody was going to catch their right. foot on. Right. So. I mean, we, you know, it was a last minute thing. They told us that they were having a tennis tournament that weekend. It was kind of like, well, so guys crew volunteered to go over and do it. You had to had it put in. I, it was all the way across. It was up higher than, than the tennis courts. So I don't know where they added the extra yeah. gravel to. I don't know, but I just thought it was interesting. That Unless it's what kids threw out of it. So. Merchandise and their own money into 
improving the park system themselves. Right. But, yeah, that was yep. impressive. We don't see that very often. Could you, Terry, let me know how much that was so I can get back to sure. the people? I think the issue is whether you're a basketball player or a tennis player. Well, I asked. Them, I said, well, you don't want us to put money into the basketball court, but if we were putting it in the tennis court, would you, because it's got cracks too, would you want that instead? They said, no, we just don't know that it's necessary. Yes, so, I mean, it wasn't, you know, it was an honest conversation. It's hard to please everybody. Well, sure it is. Anything else for Brad on his report? Any other questions? How about item B, Morgan Park retaining wall? Uh, this is the guys crew and my crew were, were looking at doing this ourselves well we've got extremely busy and this is something that uh, I don't think we're going to be able to do ourselves the uh, the blocks and everything have been, already been approved uh, this was the other part of it that we uh, the actually putting it in I uh, talked to Orrin, uh, Joan, I, actually I called like four of them and Orrin was the only one who <coughs> returned my call and came over and look, looked at my, looked at, at the project of what we were doing and the, 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 the problem with this is we were trying to not disturb the other tennis court. So we have a narrow, I think it was about six foot margin to get a back or track hole down in between there dig the footings, pour the footings, got to pump all the concrete in. There's just a tremendous amount of work that has to be done. And with guys crews being out on doing sidewalks and we've got, I'm understaffed. We just wanted to see what it would cost to uh, see about an outside contractor setting the blocks for us. And uh, they, this is what they came up with and this is the footings and stuff is the way I had set it up for, and talked with, with the uh, Mr. Schreider, uh, who we're getting the blocks from, that said would be the best way to pour a footing and then pour another slab so there would be a slab from the tennis court to the thing so it wouldn't have that low area down there that holds the water. Why ever that was ever designed like that, I do not know. This would be all uh, concrete through there. And then uh, setting the blocks uh, with the crane. Uh, to get them set in there. So Brad, this, this contractor then would be the one liable if, if that wall fell. Right. I, I mean, to me, that is a, a critical piece of information because this is a pretty important area with that type of retaining wall. If, if anything that we did as a city fell from a liability standpoint, you know, we need to make sure this is done right. right. I know it's not cheap, but I think it needs to be done. Yeah, and I don't have any problem with having somebody do it. Are we going to run into an issue since it wasn't bid out? Of well, I think we would we would open it up for bid. I mean, for okay. some for this kind of money, we would have to. I think okay. we'd have to. I mean, I, I'm sure you all would want to do it. We'd have to go out for bid for it. Okay. Yeah, I have no problem with doing the project if we go out for bid. For I mean, no, this is something that we would. I don't know, Terry, where would we get the money? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could, well, we consider the. Uh, I guess maybe guys, area. guys, the guy would have some money maybe laying so around that we could just. I, I think there are plenty of projects that we're not going to right. get completed in this year that we would be able to reallocate funds to take care of those. Um, so the proposal is then to rebid this entirely as a contracted out project, is what you're saying. Well. Correct. Well, the bid, I, I think so. I think we'd have to for this kind of money. I, yeah. I mean, I, I would feel comfortable. I but would I, feel better to put it out. But his proposal said it was just for the work, and we were going to provide the materials. We've already we've already got the material. The material is already okay. yeah. Right. This is that was already labor, taken care of. A labor bid, okay. except for yeah. labor yeah. labor only. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, except for the slab and what be it that they're going to pour themselves, correct? The, yeah, but the concrete's already. I've already. Figured con concrete that, yeah. and everything, and they're just actually putting it in, just the labor. Okay. So you you just need approval from the board to uh, to bid this. I don't, you know, I don't think I even need that. If, you're all no. part of if you all are in agreement to do this with a contractor, then we don't really need it. We need to do that and then bring the bids bring back to, to you. For I think approval. that's a smart move. Okay. okay. So what's the board's <laughs> pleasure? That's, that's fine. Go for bids. Yeah, go for bids. Okay, I think we're going to be in trouble for that. 
Okay, I right. think we're all in agreement on that. Right, thank you. Uh, next item I have is the pool chairs, uh, the lounge chairs. I think you all have the Beautiful pictures, pictures on your iPad. Mm -hmm. on there. <laughs> um, when we uh, got into them this year, this is what they looked like. Um, I guess over the winter they kind of got a little worse. Uh, they they did clean up somewhat, but not nothing to the extent. I mean, they're basically just like about like just maybe just a touch of lighter than this. Uh, I had uh, I, uh, Chrissy with uh, Westport or no Midwest Pools. I uh, was talking to her about it, and they had uh, I, I didn't even know they could even restring these things. And there's a company over in Troy, Illinois, uh, that does this, and apparently is the only one around. Uh, that that does this, or if I'm with checking, um, to do all 56 chairs uh, is seven thousand two hundred and twelve dollars and eighty cents. To buy the new chairs, if we had to go out and buy the same 56, and they would do it at the same price for 2012, they said they would honor that price is eleven uh, eleven thousand six hundred and uh, $60. And Brad and I talked about this a little bit beforehand. It's a situation where they'll be able to do them in phases so we won't be left without chairs. And from a timing standpoint, right. we'll be able to get these chairs replaced in a reasonable right. amount of time. He would pick up 25 the first time, and he said he would, uh, if you all agreed to do it, he would be over here Saturday. He'd pick up 25, get the material ordered, make sure, you know, actually look, look at the chair, make sure. Get it. He said it'd be two weeks to get those back, and then he'd pick up when he brought those back. He would have the next next thirty one back in in one week because he'd, he'd have the material. But he wants to. I guess there's a lot of di different type of material that goes these bands that go around there, and uh, because the the uh, the frames themselves are in really good shape, it's just the banding is what uh, is bad on them. You know, Brad. I wonder if they and I know this. Was probably really stupid but I wonder if it's more expensive adding those four blue straps if they just did all white if that would save you know any money whatsoever in supplies having the, the same I think they're all there the way he talked they were everything was the same it's okay. just that he would just put in the back to match our ones that that, that we have so they all look the same okay do we want 25 chairs missing on opening weekend I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal on opening wing that pool's cold <laughs> well, are there supposed to be thunderstorms this weekend? I don't, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think that's a big issue. And you, usually, until school's out, it's it's not. Um, yeah. You know that. Well, yeah. Seven so what, days in counting. Yeah. What's the board saying? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think we repair. I'll make repair. a motion that we go with the repair of the pool chairs with the quote from Patio Furniture Repair LLC from Troy, Illinois for $7,212.80. I second. Motion by Alderman Casterly, seconded by Alderman Polly to uh, repair the uh, pool with and go with a bid from Patio Furniture Repair LLC, Troy, Illinois, in the amount of $7,212.80. Does that cover your motion? Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Everybody okay? Roll call vote. Alderman Clark? Yes. Alderman Slater? Yes. Alderman Holly? Yes. Alderman Preston Casserly? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Motion carried 5 0 with one absent. Anything else, Brad? Uh, yep. The, uh, and this is just for your all's thing. Uh, tomorrow uh, night at, uh, I think at 6 o'clock is when it starts, the American Legion uh, has their first game out at the uh, complex. They are uh, using our facility this uh, this year. Uh, they ha they will have the uh, color guard uh, and somebody I think is going to sing the national anthem and what have you. And uh, uh, just like to see everybody out there. Uh, I think it's going to be a good thing for the uh, complex and uh, for the for the city to have have them there now. It's, uh, I think it's going to be a good fit. Okay. Thanks for the update, mm -hmm. Mr. Hamp. Uh, first item. Is the uh, monthly report? Do you have any questions? You continue to disappoint Alderman Castle because there's still no new homes on the permit list. No, I'm more no. worried about the trash. That's somebody else. Oh, well, okay. I saw new homes. This, 
Cashley would be very happy with next month's report. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh. I worry about the trash. And I see good increases on trash calls and stuff. So. Okay. <laughs> and chickens. And chickens. And ducks. Chickens is in a category. Yeah, I was going to say, where is the line for chickens? I don't see Chickens it. and ducks. I, I thought I saw in there there was uh, you had more new homes than we had all of last year, or am I reading the wrong line? My numbers are pretty small. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Let me show you how to make it bigger. New. <laughs> oh, he has to figure out we how to will make it next month. Huh? Well, all right, next month we're going to hold you to it. We have another one coming. So. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions on the monthly report? Okay. Next item I have is a special event permit application, SCP number 8, on 4914 Paul Owen B. Care of Warren County Fair Board submitted a special event permit application for demo derby events to be held at the Warren County Fairgrounds on May the 31st, 2014 and October 25th, 2014. Uh, this motion for approval passed 7 to 0 with one abstention due to a working relationship, one absence, and one vacancy at the May 1st, 2014 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. And Mr. Owen B. is here this evening if you have any specific questions for him. Always a good time. Any questions? Now Fred will be pleased to know that it starts at 3 o'clock and gets over by 11, so we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions or concerns? I make a motion that we approve the special permit um, request for the Warren County Fair Board's demo derby to be held at the Warren County Fairgrounds on May 31st and October 25th. Second. Motion by Alderman Cashley, seconded by Alderman Ock to approve the application from the Warren County Fair Board for a demo derby on May 31st, 2014, and October 25th, 2014. Any questions? Discussion? Roll call. Alderman Slater? Yes. Alderman Holly? Yes. Alderperson Cassidy? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Clark? Yes. Motion carried 5 0 with one absent. Mayor, if you wouldn't mind, just to ask Mr. Owen one question. It's not really sure. Changing. To the permit. Um, on some of the pictures, is there any different way than other than the aerial? Yeah. See, it's kind of hard to see right yeah, planning and zoning we talked to uh, about drawing an actual hand drawn map out to submit with the permits it's just sometimes with that aerial it's hard to see the writing right. done on it so i appreciate it thank you next item is special event permit application scp number nine <coughs> on april 9th 2014 paul owen b care of warren county fair board Submitted a special event permit application for the Pride in Your Ride truck show event to be held at the Warren County Fairgrounds on August the 26th, 2014. This motion for approval passed 7 to 0 with one abstention due to a working relationship, one absence, and one vacancy at the May 1st, 2014 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. This is just trucks, right? No motorcycles? This is just big trucks, right? And it's just a, like a car show? Right. There's no competition or any okay is that's it, what we thought is it safe to assume in all these that the chief has seen the numbers of expended expended attendance and there's no issues and if there is you bring them up yes okay. both the chief and uh, guy Gieber's director of public works okay. receives all the applications as soon as I get them for their review Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the Warren County Fair Board's Pride in Your Ride Truck Show to be held at the Warren County Fairgrounds on August 26, 2014. Second. Motion by Alderman Casserly, seconded by Alderman Hawley to approve the uh, Fair Board's request for Pride in Your Ride Truck Show on August 26, 2014. Roll call, please. Alderman Hawley? Yes. Alderperson Casserly? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Clark? Yes. Alderman Slater? Yes. Motion carried 5 0 with one absent. Next item I have is a site plan approval for a transi transitional living facility, SP 84, to be located at 101, 103, 105 Morgan Trails Court. 
on April 3rd, 2014, a request was filed for the site plan approval. And this property is zoned R3, high density residential. This motion for approval passed seven to zero with one abstention due to working relationship, one absent and one vacancy at the May 1st, 2014 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. And Kathy from Step Up is here if you have any specific questions for her. There was no conditions they put on the site plan? Not on the site plan, okay. just on the conditional use permit, which would be next. Oh, there's no motion. We have to wait till we're in the Oh, okay. See. Okay. You're covered. Any questions for, uh, for this issue? Do you want to address anything uh, on it, Mrs. Pritchard? Okay. Everybody good? Yeah, well, I think yeah, we beat great. this one up pretty good last night. I, I think the uh, planning zoning did too. <laughs> I would say come by and see the landscaping if you have a chance. Do we need a motion or is this a no, order? No, it's a okay. Okay. later. Okay. We're good with that one, Jack. Okay, next item I have is a conditional use permit approval for a transitional living facility, CUP 38, to be located at 101, 103, 105 Morgan Trails Court. Basically, same thing on April 3rd. A request was filed for the conditional use permit approval for the transitional living facility. The property is zoned R3, high density residential. The motion for approval passed 7 to 0 with one abstention due to working relationship, one absence, one vacancy at the May 1st, 2014 Planning Zoning Commission meeting with the conditions of no more than four guests or residents reside in any single unit and that one unit is occupied as residence by the management staff of the facility. Was, it, was that the intent, I guess I can ask you, was that the intent that, uh, that supervision be housed on the site? Yes. Okay, because at some place earlier talked about there wouldn't always be supervision there, meaning that the supervisors may work or may be off site or? They would live on site. Okay. Uh, right now that's us. Okay. Um, Always somebody there. I assume it's safe to know that you, you guys own these properties, right? No, rent no. them. You rent them. Domain Construction currently owns the property. And you live, you reside in the middle unit? The end unit, the end closest to the street. Okay. All right. Uh, for some reason, I thought one unit was for, for uh, male, and one for females, and Right, and you would think if I was in the middle, that would be good, but. What I thought. <laughs> I'm true. actually in a position now where um, I may be able to go all male um, with, I have some turnover where I've got some kids graduating, I have girls graduating, and so I'm, and I have more male applicants, so I'm looking at going all male there, and then we rent two units up on Main Street that I'm probably going to have my girls there. Um, so I'm looking at doing that, because it, it, it can create issues. <laughs> Um, but right now, it, it is girls in the middle and boys on the other end. Okay. I looked up on your website. Where do you get your kids out again? Uh, uh, Missouri Alliance. They're Missouri, a, okay, so yeah. they come through the state for Missouri Alliance, and then you sub sub to them. Correct. I'm a I'm a con I have a contract with right. Missouri Alliance, who has a contract with the state. The state. Okay. Correct. Uh, my other question is kind of a. Uh, I was surprised at the condition of of three to four per apartment. We, in our zoning, we don't have a number of occupants per square foot requirement, do we? No. So then how can we put a condition like this on that if there is no requirement in general statute? It is a conditional use and a commercial use, which would be different than just a typical residential use. And you're right, Alderman Ock, that you get into some equal protection issues when you limit residency. But I think because of this very specific and narrowly defined use with regards to multiple 
unrelated individuals residing together, I think you could put, legally would be okay putting a restriction under the number of occupants within each unit. Now, whether or not that's a good idea or whether or not that's something you guys want to do, that's a completely separate issue. But I think because of the structure of this operation, you could do it. Okay. I think there would be a reasonable reason to do it that would that would be independent of any type of prejudicial determination of why to do it. But she could, in theory, I don't see this without, she could come back and say, well, you know, we can put two bunk beds in each bedroom and have twice as many kids, and we'd have to get into a discussion well, about that, or you think you could uh, uphold the restriction? I think you could. I think there's a rational basis independent of any determination of socioeconomic status that you could say you just don't want to create an environment of overcrowding. Now, that being said, I, I what I mean is I have no issue with it because one of the the things that we like to create in the program is an environment that's more like I'm living in the community in my own apartment right. instead of I'm living in a residential facility with tons of kids here and bunk beds and um, I take great strides to make sure that it feels more harmony. But I think, no, I, I think yeah, your analysis, yeah, Alderman Hawk, yeah. is, is on point in that, yes, in a typical residential situation, um, there's even issues with defining a family in a zoning code. Um, but in this particular one, you know, the question is always if it's constitutional, which would be the ultimate issue, is it, is it you know, discriminatory, but is it constitutional? Is there a rational basis independent of any type of socioeconomic, sexual orientation, race, sex, gender, whatnot. Um, and I think there is in that you don't want to create an environment of it overcrowding in what were built as residential, you know, single family units. And I think that would be enough of a rational basis that it would withstand that. And I think there's precedent regarding that. Okay. Because it's so narrowly defined as this kind of quasi multifamily yet business unit. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. We're good. Any other questions for? Thank you. Thank you. That's that's the ordinance also. Any concerns with that? Since it's uh, going to be a bill later on. Okay, we're good. Okay, next item is a text amendment to section 405.050 definitions and interpretation, ADM dash six seven A, and this is to add a. Layover, RV layover stop definition and this motion for approval passed six to zero with two abstentions due to working relationships, one absence and one vacancy at the May 1st, 2014 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Okay, here's my questions. Okay. Is this a conditional use permit situation? No. no. So this anybody in the C3 could establish a Stop over recreational trail in a park within the community without coming for PMZ. And, and they can't charge for it. Anybody that. No charge. And specifically, this is just adding the definition of an RV park to the code. The but Appendix A is the next one. But does but, but the specific ordinance say you can't charge? That was requested by the Planning and Zoning Commission and. Uh, it says no fee can be charged. Mr. Harder, I, well, I, I, know, but I, I mean, is that a legitimate thing to put on? I mean, here's my concern with it. Uh, we got a lot of C3. We got C3 that's more than an acre and a half all over town. Um, and so if we set a precedent, then are we opening it up for a trailer park in a C3? Uh, is it, uh, under this definition? And this does the requirement in here of not charging and I don't see why we can't say to them you can't charge it's their business you know you can say it's not a business these clubs are businesses they're, they're not taxed but they're businesses so I, I just want to know what are we opening up by going this direction I, I mean that was one of the concerns by planning and zoning Alderman Oct. yeah I mean you are opening up and, and in conjunction with the next the grid outlay is the permitted use. The the I think a little bit of history here, Alderman Ock, was the Elks want to be able to have a couple of vehicles at a time. 
So, you know, the only way we can really, and we really have the polar opposites. We've got, you know, residential, and then we've got the RV park, which is, I think, kind of what you think about with a trailer park. We tried to put as narrowly defined of a middle definition here. That would be more along the lines of what they would do, but obviously you can't create a special law that only applies to the Elks. Mm -hmm. So, like the state legislature does, they say a city of this size, like when you were on the board and the, the hotel tax was passed, you know, the city was the only city that fit within that parameters at that time. You try to come up with something that narrows it as much as possible. So we had the acreage requirement, 1.5 acres, no more than four vehicles, for intermittent, you know, temporary parking only, um, no longer than 96 hours per parking occurrence. Parking occurrence, if they leave and come back, it still counts within the 96 hours. Um, one of the biggest issues we have anytime we deal with something with vacation vehicles is enforcement because they're mobile. Um, but it was an attempt by planning and zoning to come up with something that was kind of in the middle but would not be extremely profitable. 1.5 acres for four vehicles, no longer than 96 hours with the concept. And I think that was kind of one of the things that uh, Scott Schoenfeld said, we talked about the no fee can be charged for parking occurrence. And we added that back in at their request that when we originally did, we talked about it because they don't charge a fee for it, um, for them to do it because they're Alex members or relatives of Alex. But yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Old Minock. I mean, if somebody in C3 fits this definition, they could do the same thing. And it's a permitted use. It's not conditional. The only thing would be they still have to go through the site plan process, but it's, a, it's the administrative site plan review. It's not the full site plan unless there's issues that Jack would see. Um, so yeah, you're right. It does open it up where now we try to put in there no, no permanent um, no permanent attachments, um, quick disconnect type utilities only, which really would be electric, and obviously no sewer or water connections. The water would be regulated under the water. Well, that's that was my next question is, at the length of time, you're talking a four-day time period, and the assumption is that the vehicle is coming in with a sewer system that's already been emptied so they don't have to worry about discharging on the property or somewhere or finding a place to discharge and I don't know where you find a place to discharge in Warrington. Flying J. Okay. So you'd have to leave Warrington. Or still or Flying J as well. Yeah. So so the I mean the question to me if uh, probably a less concern if it was a you know a two day thing as opposed to four, because four is hardly a stopover. That's a little bit more than a stopover. Um, I mean, those are my issues with it. I just, you know, the monitoring is an issue. You know, are we gonna, are we gonna monitor it? There was, we, this was quite extensively discussed. There was at one point in time, the concept generally, if you brought a motor home to your house, could you, we could do a no fee permit. Planning and zoning did not want to do that. They didn't want to get into that. Um, and you're absolutely right, Alderman Hawk. You know, when you put something like this into place, you have to think about, who could how who could abuse it? You know how could it be abused? You know what could happen? So we tried to address that with the 96 hours, the parking occurrence defined, saying that if you leave and you come back, you're still you can't leave for five minutes, drive around the block, come back and hook back in the electric. There's a limitation on the water hookup. There's a limit you can't hook into sewer, um, and the only thing you can do is plug in for electric. And that was what we came up with. So, I mean, obviously, when you're creating a new code provision, you know, you're really starting from scratch. And I, I don't know any other city that has this middle ground. You know, they have the park and they have this this middle ground for parking of the travel campers. Uh, Mr. Horner's here, and you're, you're representing the office. Would you want to come forward and kind of tell your story? I, I know I know you've been to planning and zoning two different occasions when I've been there. They kind of beat up on you pretty heavy. So I, I think if you share with the board what, what the uh, issues are, it might help them clarify things. Okay, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Don Horner. I'm here representing Warren Elks Lodge. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization. We have our own facility out here on Veterans Memorial Parkway. 
Uh, we last summer celebrated our 30 year anniversary, so we've been around here for a while. We are community oriented. Our two major charities are kids and veterans. And you know some of the activities we do, we just had an Easter egg hunt out there. I don't know exactly how many kids we hosted for it, but it was a very nice turnout. Uh, we do Christmas dinners, we sponsor ball leagues, things like that. So we, we try to pour the majority of the money back into our community. You know, of course we do have a facility we have to take care of as well. What we're looking for, and uh, last summer we found out we were in violation because nobody knew that there was no place in the city of Warrenton that was zoned to accommodate an RV parking of any kind. So we, after we were made aware of it, and we were made aware of it because one of our members came down here to get a building permit to put a couple of plug-in stanchions out in our recently acquired little over an acre and a half piece of property. So that started this whole thing going. Uh, our whole purpose behind this is as elks travel across the country, many lodges have hospitality. You pull in, say, can we plug in for the night? They let you plug in probably tomorrow. Most of them are gone. We have had a couple instances where somebody would pull in like on Friday, pull out on Sunday because they wanted to, maybe they pull a vehicle behind a big RV and they would one weekend, they went to a Renaissance fair in Winsville. And then the next day, they went to a Cardinals baseball game in St. Louis. And they came home from the baseball game and then left. So I don't know of any instances where anybody's been there over two days. And I only know of one or two instances where there's only been over a couple of RVs. The reason we are very receptive to trying to up this to four for number of vehicles and, and number of days is because you get groups that travel together and you get three or four I know there's several campers within our local organization here and they'll take off and they go someplace for a extended weekend just as count camaraderie so if we could accommodate four units for no more than four days I mean that and we have absolutely at this time anyway no intention of opening up an RV park it would be cost prohibitive for us at this time to try to run a water line and sewer out to the central location where the RVs we're going to have the electric to, which there's already electric there. We just want to upgrade it to a 50 amp service so we can accommodate an air conditioner when it's really hot. Uh, but other than that, it's for visiting members and their guests, and that's really our whole intention of it. We don't charge. If somebody wants to give a donation, great. If they don't, they're, as we refer to them, as our brothers and sisters. So we don't uh, don't request anything, and if they want to give something, that's up to them. So, And if you, any of you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to try to uh, address them. I'm just one disclaimer, I'm representing a little over about 320 members of our local lodge here, so I may not answer everything exactly the way any one of the other 300 and plus members might answer it, but uh, they kind of asked me to help with this project. So that's what, why What's I'm the here. most number of RVs you've ever had? To my knowledge, there's been two. Two. But I may have missed some. I don't live there. <laughs> you know, so some people would disagree with that on occasion, but it's, you know, I'm not there every day. But and like I say, I only know of a couple of times where people have been here over a couple of days. But, you know, if you have something big going on in the St. Louis area, I mean, we have people come in, and one of the things they do, they usually come in. Of course, you have to be a member of the Lodge, the Elks Lodge, someplace to get into our lodge, and they want to know where we can go eat. So we send them uptown to Brewski's or to Applebee's or any of the other numerous eating places around town, send them to other attractions around, things like that, and try to help them out. So, uh, Any questions for Mr. Horner? Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your patience. I, I, I know planning and zoning looked at this very close numerous- Three months in a row. I know, <laughs> numerous times, and I, I 
I think you had to be patient to uh, go through it all. Well, right? and I appreciate Jack and, and uh, Mr. Rabel working with us as much as they did and, and quite frankly, putting up with me. <laughs> we right. had some pretty lengthy discussions in a couple of the meetings to get where we're at now. And to Mr. Ox benefit, to several of those questions were asked during the planning and zoning meetings as well. So. Any other questions on that issue? Board fine with that? How Next about? item I have is an amendment to Appendix A, ADM 67, and it is to add uh, an RV layover stop as a permitted use within the C3 zoning district. This motion for approval passed 6 to 0 with two abstentions due to working relationships, one absence, and one vacancy at the May 1st, 2014 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Did the, did the zoning board discuss the option of doing it as a conditional use? Yes. And? They decided to do it as a permitted use with the revised definition that narrowed the opportunity down to just four uh, RVs per minimum of 1.5 acre site. The, the Elks Lodge provision. Excuse me? The Elks Lodge provision, the mayor's, uh, the attorney's smile, I can't understand. I, I believe, and Mr. Horner would probably agree that at all the PNZ meetings, we were trying to look up to help accomplish his goal, but protect the city. I, I understand city that. Wide. I mean, that doesn't mean we have to agree. I understand mm -hmm. that. <laughs> I think Scott Costello said something like, I don't know if this is going to be a mistake, but I, my instinct tells me to keep it as a permitted use. There obviously was a lengthy discussion about what is what ramification, and they always talk about this when we change tax, what ramification does this have to C3 as a whole? But the belief, I, and I don't want to speak for planning and zoning, but I think the belief from planning and zoning was we made this so narrow that it would not be profitable for someone to do it someone may do it just to irk someone else or cause the city issues, but it was very, very, you know, we tried to really narrowly define it to a point where it wouldn't be business, it wouldn't be a business opportunity, it wouldn't be it would just merely the Elks provision, if you will. So I was going to turn the paper of the Elks law. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? What else you got, Jack? Uh, last item I have is the Warrington Area Chamber of Commerce is requesting 52 additional days, 13 days at four locations to uh, display the banner sign regarding the 2014 Festival of Fun. The uh, Warrington Area Chamber of Commerce has existing banner sign permit number 5158 for the 56 days permitted by code. And they're just asking to uh, That'll expire on May the 26th, so they're asking to be able to keep their signs up from May the 27th through June the 9th to help advertise for the Festival of Fun. Discussion, concerns? Need a motion on that. No motions? They're waiting for me to do it. Come on, John. I, I'm just you're the president. I'm just asking. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the additional days. I hear a second. I'll second. Motion by Alderman Clark, seconded by Alderman Sluter, to approve the uh, banner extension request for multiple locations for the Warrington Chamber of Commerce, ending on June 9th. Is that right, Jack? Yes, sir. Okay. Any other discussion? I would just like to say that I mean I think this is important and, and I, I'm in agreement with it but that four-way stop is looking really trashy and I think we need to start paying attention to some of the signs we don't own that property well that's on the the MoDOT area and we we did change to where we weren't picking up signs on the MoDOT right away MoDOT picks up I know, but we were picking up. But, but I'm just saying, I think, I'm just making a general statement that I think our four-way stop is looking really junky. And what's the solution? I'd go back to picking up the signs to from MoDOT. 
that we said we weren't going to do in November when I was in Vegas. I, I, I personally nope. haven't had any complaints on that. Nope. Has any board member had a complaint besides Alderman nope. Casterly? You all had any complaints? I find complaints? the signs very informative. I, I think the only complaint we've had was Mr. Off made a statement of one hanging the last time. The what now? The one that was hanging. Yeah, oh, was flapping. The, the, big, <laughs> the big one? No, the no, one no. Yeah. The one on the side of the building over here. That oh, was fine. They okay. wanted to extend it. The side was not secure. I thought it was. My oh, work okay. sense of humor. I need a vote. Roll call. Alder Preston Kesselly? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Clark? Yes. Alderman Schluter? Yes. Alderman Hyde? Yes. Motion carried by zero with one absent. I think it's an important thing. I'm just saying. I am a resident of the town, so if I think it's crappy, it's worth bringing up. Terry? I vote. Uh, Tony? I vote. What, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you were saying if I had any complaints. It'd be oh. good to go. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm ready for. Um, Item 12, Relay for Life Fundraiser. Good evening. At a previous board meeting, the board had voted to support Paint the Town Purple as a fundraising effort for Relay for Life and allow them to place purple ribbons on the city light poles in town during the week of June 2nd through June 6th. In a further show of support and to allow city employees to become involved in Paint the Town Purple, I would like to suggest Dress Down Day to support Relay for Life. Employees would be able to choose to donate $5 for which they would receive a sticker provided by Relay for Life to wear with jeans and a purple shirt on Wednesday, July 4th. For an additional donation of $3, they would receive three additional stickers and can dress down for the remaining days of the week. So I was requesting support from the board. Yeah, go for it. Do you have a motion? No. No, no. just your no. Is, this, is this where you paint your face purple too? And <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> just check. Yeah. They, they buy the, they buy the t uh, They have to purchase yeah. the stickers. The donation the goes to Relay for Life. And the money goes to Relay for Life. Yes. I think we're all good with Will that. Will you be regular? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. Item 13, resolution number 303. Resolution designating May 31 through June 6, 2014 as Relay for Life. Paint the town purple week in the city of Warrington. You want to read the resolution? Yes, sir. Whereas cancer is the second most common cause of death in the United States, counting for nearly one of every four deaths, whereas this year about 33,890 new cases of cancer will be di diagnosed in Missouri, and about 12,870 Missourians will die. And whereas in more than 5,200 communities and 20 countries, Relay for Life events is the American Cancer Society's signature activity, raising awareness and funds for the fight against cancer. And whereas Relay for Life is a life-changing event that brings together more than 4 million people every year to celebrate the lives of those who have battled cancer, remember loved ones lost, and fight back against the disease. Now, for, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Aldermen of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, that May 31st through June 6, 2014, be designated as Warrenton's Relay for Life Paint the Town Purple Week and encourage all businesses and residents to show their support in the fight against cancer to help create community awareness and sharing the hope that one day we will have a, a, a cure for cancer. I need a motion authorizing the mayor to sign the resolution. I make the motion we authorize the mayor and the board president to sign the resolution. Second. Motion made by Alderman Ock, seconded by Alderman Cashley, authorizing the mayor That's and the board president to sign the resolution 303A. <coughs> Roll call, please. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Clark? Yes. Alderman Schluter? Yes. Alderman Holly? Yes. Alderperson Casterly? Yes. Motion carried 5-0 with one absent. Any other thing for you, Melody? No, sir. Good. I'm on item fifth or 14, bills to ordinances. First bill is bill number 30-14. Make a motion for the first reading of bill number 30-14. Second. Motion by Alderman Ock, seconded by Alderman Kessley for first reading of bill number 30-14. A zoning ordinance as authorized under section 405.390 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, approving a site plan for Step Up LTLP LLC located at 101, 103, and 105 Morgan Trails Court. Call for second final reading of bill number 30-14. Second. Motion made by Alderman Ock, seconded by Alderman Castley for second 
and final reading the passage, passage of bill number 30-14. A zoning ordinance is authorized under section 405.390 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, approving a site plan for step up TLP LLC located at 101, 103, and 105 Morgan Trails Court. Roll call, please. Alderman Clark? Yes. Alderman Schluter? Yes. Alderman Holly? Yes. Alderperson Kesselly? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Motion carried 5 0 with one absent. Build number 31 14. Reduce bill number 31-14 for first reading. Second. Motion by Alderman Ock, second by Alderman Cashley for first reading of bill number 31-14. In ordinance approving the conditional use to allow a transitional living facility for Step Up TLP LLC located at 101, 103, and 105 Morgan Trails Court. Call for second final bill reading of bill number 31-14. Second. Motion Is by Alderman Ox, seconded by Alderman Cashley for second and final reading and passage of bill number 31-14. In ordinance approving the conditional use to allow a transitional living facility for Step Up TLP LLC located at 101, 103, and 105 Morgan Trails Court. Roll call, please. Alderman Schluter? Yes. Alderman Holly? Yes. Alderperson Casserly? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Clark? Yes. Motion carried 5 0 with one absent. Bill number 32 14. I call for the first read of bill number 32 14. I'll second. Motion by Alderman Cashley, second by Alderman Sluter for first reading of bill number 32 14. In ordinance amending section 405.050, definitions and interpretation of the municipal code of the city of Warrenton, Missouri. Call for the second and final reading of Bill number 32-14 in its passage. I'll second. Motion by Alderman Clark, seconded by Alderman Sluter for second and final reading and passage of bill number 32-14. In ordinance amending section 405.050 <coughs> definitions and interpretation of the municipal code of the city of Warrenton, Missouri. Roll call, please. Alderman Holly? Yes. Alderperson Casserly? Yes. Alderman Ock? No. Alderman Clark? Yes. Alderman Schluter? Yes. Motion carried four to one with one absent. Alderman Rock, you want to comment on your no? Well, it'll be the same comment on the next bill. Okay. Um, you want to wait till then? Sure. I'm both <laughs> done. Well, uh, I can repeat my comments if you want to. No, no, once would be enough. Uh, <laughs> bill well, that way the paper gets it right. <laughs> uh, bill number uh, 33 14. I'll make a motion for the first reading of bill number 3314. Second. Motion by Alderman Sluter, seconded by Alderman Holly for first reading of bill number 33 14. In ordinance amending Appendix A of Chapter 405, Zoning Regulations of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, regarding three commercial use, B lodging in the C3 zoning district. Make a call for a second and final reading of bill number 33 14. Second. Motion by Alderman Sluter, seconded by Alderman Holly, for second and final reading and passage of bill number 33-14. In ordinance amending Appendix A of Chapter 405, Zoning Regulations of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, regarding three commercial use B lodging in the C3 Zoning Districts. Roll call, please. Alderperson Casserly? Yes. Alderman Ock? No. Alderman Clark? Yes. Alderman Sluter? Yes. Alderman Holly? Yes. Motion carried four to one with one absent. Now I'm ready for your comments on that. Well, I think that uh, Zoning Board President Costello should have went with his gut when he made the comment that the lawyer said about could be opening up a can of worms. Um, I know I'd have less of a problem if it was a two-day stay over as opposed to a four because we had testimony here that uh, Mr. Horner saying they never had anybody do more than two days, so why go four? I think we have to recognize that we're, open, we're setting up a precedent in the C3 zone, and I've been concerned for a long time that the C3 zone is our prime areas. When we start opening up for non-sales non tax usage, I think it's a problem. Um, I think if we're going to do this, then the Elks should be required to make an investment to do the sewer piece too, so that we know that the facilities, I am concerned about the, the enforcement issue of it. I mean, it's, it's another job for the enforcement code, the police, 
So I have a number of concerns, that's why I brought it up. And at the same time, recognizing the officer, a big group of people, they work hard, they contribute to the community, but that doesn't have to be the reason why you go for it. Anything else? I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. A motion by Alderman Ock, seconded by Alderman Kessley to for adjournment. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed likewise. We're adjourned.